Hey what up guys, it's Fish here and welcome back to another glorious custom map battle. Today we have a massive 2v1 siege battle on the Black Crag map. The Empire have decided to come and wipe out the Orc filth from down here in the Badlands. However, Grimgore Ironhide is not going to go down without a fight, even though the Empire are pouring in their artillery right now. So what we'll go ahead and do is we'll go ahead and stick the game on slow-mo, just letting the armies advancing it closer and closer. We will go ahead and have a look at the map, then we'll look at the army comps, and then we'll get straight into the battle. If you want to skip straight to the battle and want to skip all this talking, then there'll be a skip to battle button in the description. You can go ahead and click that timestamp, and that'll take you straight to the beginning of the battle. So let's start off by looking at the, the Grand Fortress of Black Crag. It does look really cool, and this was something I actually found out with the custom map battles. I was like, oh shit, yeah, this map looks really, really interesting. I think at the moment in the custom campaign map battle mod, this is the default Orc City. Um, however, obviously they are going to try and make it individual so that every Orc City gets a different city. Obviously at some point we may actually do have more maps. But if we look at it, there are four entrances into the city itself. We have a side entrance here with kind of like a broken down wall, which makes me kind of think the Empire have been sieging out the city for a little while now. Then we have two entrances in the main gate. We have one right here, which passes through, and a very similar gate on the other side. These gates lead up to an inner pass right here, which I really, really like. Again, it's kind of like an, a two choke points open area, and then kind of like a ramp where you can also hold the enemy back, which is something I really, really do like. I also, I, I like the architecture of this. It does make it feel very much like an orc city. Again, I would, all, I, I, I kind of say this a lot. I'd like to see more of these houses kind of scattered around, like more suburbs, suburbs everywhere. Uh, however, I feel like the model has done a good job of kind of putting all the orc houses on the on the mountain side. I think that does look really, really cool. The way he has kind of done it all throughout the entire city, which is nice. But again, I'd like to see you know more. Of pits and and markets and well, orcs even have markets i don't know but just more like more like life brought to the city is something i think i always find myself complaining you know just instead of having all more of these open areas have like uh, i don't know like messed up street orc streets or something like that would be pretty cool however these are only minor complaints i always have you know it's only you know if the modder can you know they've obviously created an amazing mod you know it's only if they want to go the extra mile which is cool. So then as we go back to the inner layers, obviously we, as we see, we've got two choke points there. We've got one there, and we obviously have a final one right here. So there's four ways into the city itself. Then if we make our way back, we have our main kind of ramp to the inner in uh, holdings I, w I guess i would say which is really cool we have another ramp up here and there's also again three ways to the final layer you've got one round here you've got obviously one in the center we just looked up through this ramp and then we also have one ramp right around here and then for the final layer we have these really cool bridges which connect it up to the final defense which again looks really really cool i like the way he's kind of used these bridges and has kind of created them by just having these uh, strong spikes so obviously this is not a proper bridge he's kind of created this with using several models and i think that's really really cool and then finally we have like the orc i guess this is this is uh this is grimgore's uh hut right here and again that looks really really cool so that is the map we'll go ahead and take a look at the army comps now and then uh we should be ready to actually start this battle as you can see my orc biggins just getting annihilated by the by the rocket uh, batteries right now this obviously goblin just getting absolutely ripped in half look at his the orc's body it's just she just two legs right there it's disgusting so we'll start off with the attacking forces now i believe we gave them around about eight no 10k more than the defenders and we i felt like that would be like a nice even amount and it completely was this battle was so close so on the front lines here uh we have a set of two units of halberds or are these, are these just empire spears are these just empire spears wow i have not seen this unit in quite a while they are supported by some great swords. We also have some hand gunners. We have some Hellstorm rocket batteries. Some halberdiers. We have uh, we have Volksgrim. Volksgrim. Yeah, no, Volkmar the Grim. Sorry, Volksgrim. What am I talking about? He's not in a World War II military infantryman for Germans. Then we have some of the the demigriffs of Altdorf. These guys look so nice. I love their uniforms. They look really, really clean. Then we have some Knights of a Blazing Sun. We have a Celestial Wizard. As well as that, we have some more great swords further on down this line, along with the Sons of Sigma, one of my favourite regiments of renown. I think these guys are really awesome. 
We also have another Hellstorm rocket battery. The enemy do have a lot of artillery shooting out. We continue on going down the ranks. We have a Demigriff unit. We also have a set of two or three of these three units of Reichsguard. Yeah, three or just Empire. These all Empire Knights. Yeah, three units Empire Knights. Not you know the most elite cavalry, but you know Empire Knights are still pretty decent, uh, and they will get the job done. That is for sure. There's another Hellstorm rocket battery, so I think there's, I think there's four Hellstorm rocket batteries, which is going to be pretty brutal for the defenders. You can actually see the balance of power is definitely not in my favour to begin this. Uh, as well as that, we got another load of halberds on the other Empire player. We have uh, three units of Empire spears kind of guarding this flank, just to make sure that no units come out of the woods and try and harass the enemy lines. On the main lines, we have some more Empire spears. We have a load of Empire crossbow mills, some Empire gunners, and some more Empire swords, along with some great swords back there and more halberds pushing up the front line. Kofrans is going to be leading this force, and obviously we saw Volksmar the Grim on the other side. We also have some more great swords, and I think that makes it pretty much it for the entire enemy army right now. There's some more gunners opening up. Uh, oh, is this a Regiment of Renown? Oh yeah, these are the, the pirate unit, right? Or the the free yeah free company militia dudes these guys look really interesting i love it when they have the shield on the back as well it looks really cool but yeah these gunners are going to be lining up ready to get this battle started then if we look at my forces we will start off on my right hand side as the enemy slowly push through their flagellants there we have some orc boy big ones these guys are going to make up the majority of my army i think i have around about 15 units of them in my army just to kind of make up numbers because they're a pretty solid force and i think they'll get the job done so again some more orc boy big ones i have some of these night goblins and i didn't realize all night goblin units have the fanatics it's insane the fanatics are so goddamn good they can do so much damage uh, so i was really surprised to see that well at least they have them in the night goblin archers so that was awesome then we have some more savage orc boys we have some orc big ones we have some more savage orcs again they do so much damage i've got a really nice little defense here as you can see i've got all my archers here and here and here and here we press k we can see we got i got my archers set up on this so when the enemy do finally push into here my fanatic night goblin archers should just be able to open up on them and do so much goddamn damage we also have Grimgor Ironhide. I love bringing Grimgor. He's just such a strong and tough fighter. He just does not give an inch in the battles. And his bonus bonuses are always pretty good as well. We have a giant supported by some more big ones. We have some of these Orc Boar Boy big ones. Again, these are really good at taking out the Empire Cav. I believe they're anti-large and they're armor-piercing. So these guys are really good at hitting the enemy cavalry, which is kind of why I brought them. I have a giant, another giant. So I have two giants. I also have, a, I think, a set of around about seven or eight Black Orcs. So these guys are going to kind of make up my last stand force my kind of my, my my when i've tired out the enemy and drawn out a lot of their defenses these guys are going to be the guys who try and fight back and try and whittle down the enemy's final stand finally i have a crimson killers and then i have a few more units set up around here so that is pretty much the army comps i think the battle is getting ready to kick off with our first little engagement right over here so let's go ahead and jump straight into this battle as the camera messes up a little bit of course so let's go ahead and click play and we'll watch these flagellants fighting my orc boys so it's definitely going to be a hard fight. As you can see, I am heavily outnumbered. Uh, I believe I have around about 3,000 troops and the enemy have 5,000. They obviously also had a lot more money than me as well. I believe I gave them, as I said in the intro, I think I gave them around about 10 to 15k more than me. Uh, somewhere around there but I feel like that was a nice way to balance it out giving the enemy more more money and obviously allowing them to bring more units because they can bring a total of 80 units if they wanted to if they just wanted to bring cheaper units they could bring 80 units whereas I can only bring 40 um, and obviously they have the advantage in the money as well but obviously I have the defenses and I have the choke points so that's obviously gonna go in my favor I can hold the enemy back pretty nicely and just use my missiles and you know use my quality troops to, to really hit the enemy hard the hellstorm rocket batteries are a pain right now i think right what i'm what my main plan to deal with them was was just to kind of outlast them let them just hit on me because there's no way i was really getting out here to stop them so i think my main plan here was just to kind of let them do their thing let them use their ammunition and hope they don't try and focus down any of my black orcs because I'm kind of okay with losing these Orc Big Guns. They're, they're pretty not expendable, but, you know, they're not super, super expensive. And they do a lot of damage. So I'm kind of okay with these guys just, you know, being my main meat shield, absorbing a lot of the missile fire, kind of holding the enemy in place whilst my archers open up on my flagellants and the other troops. 
The engagements are kind of erupting everywhere now. I believe on this right side, I was getting slaughtered by missile fire. And you can see I've got a few weaker units running in to fight the spearmen. Luckily, we are only fighting these Empire spearmen, which is kind of pretty good for me. Um, I'm kind of happy that we are just fighting Empire spearmen. However, this right flank does seem to be giving up pretty early and more Empire spearmen are going to be pouring into the Black Crag. I mean, that does look pretty nice right there. That does look pretty awesome as a fortress city as we have more Empire soldiers pushing in. On this far, far left flank, we can see that the Hellstorm rocket batteries are just relentless. They are literally not giving up one bit. And the Empire spearmen are just marching up. However, we are not gonna let them just march into position. We are gonna charge forward. The Hellstorm rocket battery is hitting us, so getting into melee combat as soon as possible is gonna be great, because that's exactly what we want to happen. We want to use the enemy artillery against them and use the enemy artillery to start hitting their own lines. They can either shoot me and risk hitting their own men, or they can just hold fire and my men can get their butcher's work going. So I'm going to be pushing in all my, all my Orc Biggins over there. Again, if we look back in the center here, we can see that I'm kind of being broken upon right here. Luckily, the enemy are pushing in, which is allowing my Fnatic Archers literally just to shoot them to pieces. I kind of don't want to waste all my ammunition on killing just Spearmen, but they're a pretty easy target right now. Obviously, I want to save a lot of this ammunition for the enemy missiles when they push in here. Well, that was actually a really nice charge there. I obviously should have counter charged there. However, my Savage Orcs are just going to slaughter these guys. I do not expect these Spearmen without shields to really stand a chance, especially with the Archer fire coming from the, uh, uh, the supporting hills behind us. Yeah, the, these Empire Spearmen are just not going to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Savage Orcs. The Savage Orcs are just way too strong. However, this is giving the enemy a good chance to push up into a decent position. I believe I did push up more of my more of my Orc Biggins here. I re oh, yeah, I actually managed to get onto the Sterling uh, Handgunners. That's great. And the other Regiment of Renowns as well, the Free Company Militia. So I managed to get a really nice hit on these guys and pushing them back. However, the enemy are pushing in on the other flanks. Again, we just don't have the, the units right now to really stand against the enemy. There's just so many of them. We have to just try and try and clump them up and use our archers as best as physically possible. The Savage Orcs are obviously going to be doing that, as you guys can see. They do great amounts of damage, and they're supported by a load of missiles. There's just so many Empire soldiers ready to be pushed into the fortress itself. And I think this player on the right-hand side, who's actually a UD player and he does have a YouTube channel, so I'll link his channel in the description, is pushing on. So my Orcs did manage to go ahead and clean up this left flank. We managed to push back the flatulence. However, the Hellstorm rocket batteries are still goddamn shooting. They are beyond relentless. And are just doing so much damage. Obviously, I shouldn't be clumping up my units right here. Even though I do only have, what, like two units here. The flagellants are pretty much almost completely dead now. I think they have one or two soldiers left in them. And yeah, we are just getting destroyed as the halberds move up. There's also the Celestial Wizard here who has moved up as well to support. Obviously, dropping some buffs on the soldiers. This is going to be opening up my left flank pretty horrifically. I don't really have a lot in, in terms of troops to send. Obviously, you can see my numbers are whittling away. I've almost already lost a thousand soldiers and I've only just about killed a thousand of the enemy soldiers which is not good because they started off with a good uh, two to one advantage so I need to be killing a lot more of these soldiers luckily though for me the Hellstorm rocket batteries are starting to run low on ammunition this one has almost run its course and the other one is getting close down to a third shot as well as on this left hand side this Hellstorm rocket battery is running low and I believe the fourth one as well wherever it is has also just run out of ammunition so that is great news for me. The fact that they've only got really one bit of artillery left means that kind of I've, I've weathered the storm of the Empire artillery and now it's kind of up to my infantry to kind of get that advantage back just to start cutting them down and my, my, my fanatic archers as well from the Night Goblins to start hitting the enemy hard. They have really, really good positions here to be doing that and that's exactly what they are doing. They are pinning down the enemy lines. I've got some Savage Orcs here opening up, uh, charging down some Empire Spears they've managed to route. And I believe, yeah, as you can see, I'm just pinning down their infantry. I'm kind of trying to wait for more of their, their handgunners and other units, like, like their crossbows as well, to be pushed in. So I can focus them down my archers because I really do want to make sure I kill as many of the missile units as possible. Because that's really going to be my main issue. If I can take care of all these crossbows and these handgunners, then I think my Black Orcs will be enough to kind of take care of the enemy. The Savage Orcs have charged on, again, only fighting Empire Spears. So against these guys, I'm not really too worried. 
I almost feel pretty confident that these guys will be enough to take care of the Empire Spears. Obviously, the Halberds are going to make it a little bit more difficult. But we do have a lot of the Fanatics opening up, shooting in missile shots after missile shots. The, there's still more rocket artillery coming in, though, which is never fun to deal with. And you can see it finding some pretty big targets back there. I'm going to be advancing forward with Grimgore. Grimgore's going to come out and rally with the troops. He's going to push out with some of his Orc boys and help the main engagement. He's seen a nice little flanking opportunity right here. And that's exactly where he's going to be pushing. He wants to get involved here as best he can. And there we go. The Doom Diver catapults as well, which I forgot to mention I had, uh, are getting involved right now. You can just see Grimgore. Grimgore is getting stuck in right now. He saw a flank and he's smashing the enemy. I believe my Savage Orcs are actually routing from... Are they routing from a battlefield? Yeah, they are actually routing from a battlefield, but cowards. They should have saw Grimgore, and they should have rallied towards him. More Empire Swords are coming, pushing in, along with the Halberds as well. It's just a constant stream. My Fanatics are focusing down these missile units as best as they can. I want to make sure we kill them. Uh, we do, or at least do as much damage to them as possible. A beautiful foot of Gork there, right on the enemy lines. I absolutely annihilated that, doing so much damage to these units, uh, getting pretty much all four of them in a perfect hit. That was so nice. The rocket artillery boat is still shooting. Give us a chance, Precious. Give us a chance. Grimgore is going to be decapitating these halberds though. He is going to decide to pull back from here very, very soon just because he doesn't want to get surrounded. So he's going to be falling back at some point in the near future. I also have some night goblins here who have gone into battle. I guess they were maybe caught. Oh, it's night goblin infantry, I think. I've got some more night goblin infantry here as well who are going to be charging in. I believe this is a... Yeah, these are the warlords boys, so they're a regiment of renown. So he should be doing pretty good at slowing up them. And obviously we're only up against these empire infantry, sword infantry as well, which is never really that great. There are some fanatics going off. This is when I realized my archers said fanatics. So I was like, oh shit, let's use it. If we look on the right flank, we can see that I've got some of my fanatic archers. Are they, these guys got ammo? Oh, oh boy, I, I didn't, for, for some reason I didn't realize that the, the big ones were actually in my unit then. I thought that was an empire unit for some strange reason. Um, however, they're going to be pushing in to help plug this gap once more. I really don't want to open up my, my rear whilst I'm still defending over in the center. Yeah, I don't want to lose the flanks whilst you know the, the center is still under heavy contention right now. The nice thing is here that the enemy are clumping up pretty nicely. The gunners have now formed up, but we're obviously going to be focusing down them. Uh, focusing them down as soon as we get the chance to. All our archers are going to be chained on their missiles. I'm going to decide to start falling back from these, these ramp areas. I need to obviously get my archers back. They're going to be the key to my victory. If we look at the kills now, we can see that I am down to 1,800 men and the enemy are down to 3,800. So they still have, you know, I'm slowly closing the gap, but they still have 2,000 more men than me. So it's still going to be a brutal goddamn battle. If we look on the far left flank, we can see that it has pretty much completely gone out of my favor. The enemy have pushed forward and they've actually got some of their pretty strong units over here. You have some halberds who have somehow managed to break through the line. And are, they, are these guys routing now? It makes sense if they're routing. Yeah, they're routing. The Savage Orcs have managed to deal with them. So I've actually almost kind of cleaned up this left flank. The enemy don't seem to be pushing that much infantry now down that left flank. So I can kind of almost take a, a sigh of relief. However, there's still so much enemy infantry to come and fight me. So we obviously have to be very, very careful. And I don't really have any men protecting this flank. So the, the enemy, obviously, we saw they had like five units of horses. And they can easily push around this flank and use that to their advantage trying to get behind me. My numbers are definitely dwindling. However, even though my numbers are dwindling, we still have a pretty nice uh, advantage in the, the strength of the troops we have left. We have a lot of elite Black Orcs still remaining. The enemy haven't committed any of their great swords yet either, so we're definitely very even in that. However, we do have to be very, very careful. The Archer Fire is just demolishing these handgunners, which is perfect. We need this to be uh, be happening right now. Because if these handgunners are allowed to shoot and start taking down, say, my giants, then that is never going to be good for us. The enemy's kind of using this as like a, a depot to start committing men elsewhere. The Warlord's Boys have done an amazing job right now. I think we've also supported them with some fanatic archers as well. But I'm really, really impressed with these Night Goblins. You don't really expect them to do too much, but they're definitely an impressive force. We also obviously have these uh, eight peak loonies right here. They are indeed 
These guys are going to be fighting. I have my Orc Shaman coming to help out. And he's done some pretty good bonuses, uh, some pretty good spells to my infantry. What's he popping? Oh, is he popping a foot of Gork right here? He is indeed. And that's going to be demolishing a large portion of the enemy gunners. I believe that was like the crossbows and the gunners. So that was definitely worth it. Obviously, a better target might have been over here. Like, if I would have saved that spell, and then I would have popped it right here as all these halberds come flying in, I think that would have done a lot more damage, which was kind of unfortunate. Empire Great Swords now are pushing in through my formations. They're getting behind me, so I'm obviously going to have to commit some pretty impressive units over here to try and deal. Luckily, I do have a giant, so I should be sending this giant over to deal with these guys as soon as I can. I'm not really sure why I haven't sent this giant to go deal with them yet, but apparently the Great Swords are running past. Hopefully, this replay hasn't desynced because I'm pretty sure that this Great Sword unit isn't just being allowed to roam free, but maybe I did allow it to. Hopefully, I, it, the replay hasn't desynced because that would suck quite a lot if it has. If we look back, we can see the eight peak loonies fighting hard against the, the soldiers. Volksgrim is moving up right now. Volksmar, sorry, I don't know why I call, keep on combining his name. He's going to be pushing up though and doing some battle prayers to help rally his soldiers. The Great Swords have pushed on now, fighting some of my Savage Orcs. I'm not sure, again, why these Savage Orcs haven't turned around to help out the enemy or to help just go deal with the enemy. The right flank has been completely taken over and the enemy are pushing on their crossbows. Obviously, these crossbows want to start getting some nice volleys off onto my, my infantry line, which are holding here. The Savage Orcs have finally turned around and charged back at the Great Swords. I feel like the Savage Orcs are a pretty decent unit to deal with these guys. So they have such a good ward save. But I'm kind of happy with them pushing forward. Again, I'm not really sure what this giant's doing. These archers are obviously shooting the enemy in the back right now, or at least they should be. However, the enemy have pushed on pretty heavily. More great swords pouring into my, my forces. Oh, imagine a foot of Gork. If I, if I were to save that foot of, foot of Gork right now, the night goblins are surrounded and being slaughtered right there. That is not good. But imagine a foot of Gork right here. As soon as the night goblins are done, I think my lines are pretty much done for. Some of the eight peak loonies have managed to win, but they are getting shot to pieces by the gunners, which is not good. And here we go. I've got my shamans along with some doom diver catapults coming in and smashing the great swords. I really want to try and take these guys down as best as possible. And I mean, having a giant up against great swords is awesome because a giant will take care of the great swords pretty effectively. If we move over to this flank, we can see that I'm rallying up my soldiers, charging onto the great swords who have managed to push around here. Uh, the savage orcs are charging, and I believe, I believe I also have Grimgore as well helping out. Grimgore did take quite a bit of fight. Oh, he's up to full health. Okay, maybe not. However, we do have some demigriff knights who have pushed round, like I said, round this right flank, and they are supported by the knights of the blazing sun as well. They also have a celestial wizard, and they're going to be pushing on to try and hit my soldiers. Luckily, I kind of have a buffer unit right here to slow them down if they even get caught by it. I think they will get caught by it. And this weaker unit of Orc Biggins is kind of going to, going to, going to go ahead and slow these guys up and give me time to react to it. I have my my boar boys somewhere around this battlefield. I believe I'm pushing my boar boys around the flank now um, to try and kind of surprise these guys and take them out. However, I'm definitely opening myself up for this engagement. I am managing to route this unit of great swords, which is awesome. However, we've got a pretty nasty unit of cavalry round the back ready to hit us when they do decide to push in. We look at the main line now as well. You can see I have kind of slowed them up a little bit. They are finally breaking through my main line but, and are starting to push out after dealing with them like goblins. We've got some swordsmen just casually walking up the black crag. Pretty slowly, pretty calmly. They've got plenty of men to send in this engagement. My Doom Divers are still coming out, hitting these Empire Gunners. Again, as I said, I really want to take care of these guys if I can. I don't want their Gunners causing me a nuisance. I still have a few units of infantry right now. Uh, the Knights are blazing, so I'm going to get a beautiful charge off onto my Giant. However, the Giant should be doing okay again. So I don't think these guys are anti-large. They could be anti-large. Let's have a look. Yeah, these guys, the Knights of Blazing Sun are just anti-infantry, so the Giant's going to be doing great against them. Hopefully, take it, you can see they took down two models right there. That is awesome, but there's still so much enemy cavalry for me to deal with. This right flank is pretty much completely gone. I have some Empire, Empire Spears and Swords up against my Orc Biggins, and my line is extremely thin. I've got one unit holding back, three, I think, three units of enemy forces. And I believe that unit has just broken. I mean, if we take a second as well, just to take a look at the death as well. On this right flank, which was kind of, you know, one of the least action areas, the amount of dead just laying here is crazy. So many units, so much reckless hate. 
but then my right flank is going to collapse the center is going to collapse and the enemy are going to start pushing on Volksmart is going to be pushing up ready with his battle prayers however it is all is not lost I have left my best till last we have the Black Orcs ready to die for Grimgore when the time is right and I'm going to be pushing these guys down any second now. My Doom Diver Catapult is about to run out of ammunition. But I've kind of almost done what I've needed to do. Look at all these gunners. There's, what, one, two units of gunners which still have a lot of health left. And a few units of crossbows. But the crossbows have actually run out of ammunition. So overall, I've done a great job at taking care of the gunners. Which would really take out my main threat. Which is my giants. You know, these giants are going to be doing the most damage out of a lot of my other units. Leaving this giant by itself is obviously really bad of me. However, I still have another giant ready to fight and obviously a lot of cavalry left. And I mean, I have a lot of elite units. So as you can see, I only have 800 soldiers of enemy of 2,800. Jesus, they have a lot of soldiers left, but my men are elite. These are the fiercest Black Orcs and they will not go down without a fight, that is for sure. I believe at this point as well, I'm bringing back my giant because I don't want to commit him. I don't want to just leave him by himself. So my, my giant is going to be falling back and I'll be trying to use that as best I can. So I think there's a bit of a lull in the combat right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm, going to I'm just going to cut it to when the battle does pick up a bit. Uh, when the enemy decide to av advance on this final layer. So I'll see you guys uh, when that does happen. The enemy tries to push up this hill uh, with some of their soldiers. They try to hit my shaman and my these orc goblins right here. But I'm going to answer straight away with my orc boar biggins. These guys along with the black orcs are going to be doing great amount of damage against these demigriffs. Even though these guys are elite and a regiment of renown. I'm feeling pretty confident with my forces here just to completely overwhelm them. You know, once I've dealt with their charges, I'm not really feeling too scared. We do have a Celestial Wizard making his way up, though, uh, doing a pretty nice... Was that a Comet of Cassador? I don't think it was, but it was a pretty nice explosion right there onto my Black Orcs. And he's going to be charging in alongside the Demigriffs. But again, I feel like my Black Orcs are more than a match to take care of these Demigriffs once we have whittled them down. You want to kind of obviously be using them Demigriffs a bit more effectively. Grimgore has charged out against the Knights of the Blazing Sun. And again, I'm pretty happy with him doing that. He's going to fall back though and get a nice little charge in the back of the Demigriffs. Hopefully taking them down. Yeah, he's, gonna get, he's actually going to get trampled on by the enemy. However, he's obviously going to get back up. I love the way the Demigriffs actually just lie dead. That looks really cool, just like like a rug or something. We're definitely going to make some rugs out of that. So the enemy have pretty much advanced all their force inside the city itself. They're getting their gunners up and their crossbows up to the actual engagement. Obviously, they want to try and force me off this hill. They don't really want to attack this hill if they can avoid it. The Knights of the Blazing Sun are just sitting here ready to support their artillery crew which have been pushed in. And again, this is just kind of to absorb my uh, absorb my ammunition if I have any left. And also just to kind of tire out my men a little bit. However, we have a pretty nice defensive formation up here. And obviously the Black Hawks are ready to move in. But I still can't believe how few men I actually have left. Only 600 soldiers and the enemy of 2,700. But this is not over. As I said, this battle is so goddamn close that these Black Hawks will fight to the bitter end. I obviously also have my support in my cavalry as well, which is really good. And I'm also sneaking around a little uh, couple of soldiers around here, yeah. I also have some of my soldiers right around here, which I can use once the enemy commit their forces. These orc boy biggins or boar biggins will move around this left flank and hit the enemy from the side. So I'm obviously going to be looking forward to doing that. Hopefully we can kind of catch the enemy off guard because obviously they can't see my forces over there right now. I'm not really too worried right now because we obviously have a lot of soldiers. However, we are going to start getting shot now. The enemy are not taking any chances right now. And they are just using their gunners to their advantage. They're shooting me. And this really does tell me that I can't sit here. I can't wait for the enemy to come to me. So I'm going to have to charge down this hill. And I'm going to have to try and hit their gunners and stop them. I need to make something happen. Otherwise, these gunners will just shoot me to pieces. And I need to try and make sure that my giants, which you can see, I'm falling back right now. Because I don't want them to get shot. I need, I need to kind of make something happen here. So I'm going to be getting a beautiful charge off on these Knights of the Blazing Sun. The Empire players must have kind of forgotten about these guys. Um, which is really good for me. Because these guys could have been so goddamn deadly. So taking these guys out almost for free is awesome for me. I'm definitely not complaining. And the, no, the nice thing is as well. You know, we're fighting crossbowmen here without ammunition. Obviously they are doing some damage to the Black Orcs. But they're not doing a lot of damage. And the Black Orcs should just be like rattling off limbs left, right and centre here. And that's exactly what they're doing. You can see they're just dispatching 
of these crossbows. Uh, the crossbows, as you can see, are already starting to route, and I can continue on my push down this hill. Because as I said, my main, my main goal right here is just to hit the enemy gunners. I can't let the gunners keep on shooting. This handgunner has an entire arsenal of missiles left we've got some crossbows back here all with missiles and i don't have the men to spend you can already see this is literally all i have left right now two giants grim gore on full health which is pretty nice uh you know a full unit of orc boy big guns and then some black orcs and that's literally about it the balance of power again you can just see there was not in my favor so we're going to be dispatching of and taking care of these swordsmen and we're going to be pushing on Volk's mother is going to be a just rattling through my lines which is not a smart move to do he is getting deep into my lines and you know once he gets stuck in here it's going to be hard for him to escape he has he has a beautiful nice looking oh that looks so cool i love the warrior priest on the side however we're going to press k and we're going to watch his health go down we have Grimgore going charging in, popping all of his buffs right now. He also, obviously, I gave him uh, Gitznik, which is his, which is his weapon. And again, just look at Volgmar's health just go, just go, going down. Volgmar is just getting wrecked right now. Grimgore is doing so much damage along with the Black Orcs, and this is kind of almost, you know, the battle did not look good, like, good at all. However, with the support of my soldiers, you can see I've just popped. Here we go! Here we go! Here we go! And we just went ahead and slaughtered him. And he is dead. You can see the orcs rallying to Grimgore. So taking care of one of the Empire Generals is going to be amazing. And that was kind of almost just like a freebie. They were just like, yeah, we feel bad for you. How about General? I guess he didn't expect him to die back quickly. But when he's surrounded by black orcs and he has Grimgore as well. Grimgore does so much damage in melee combat. So that, you know, when he gets when he gets locked in with all his bonuses, he just slaughters. And with it, here we go when we have, what, 58 melee attack. You know, that just boosts up our stats so goddamn much. And it just means that the, the Black Orcs of armor piercing damage just, just disintegrates any individual they come up against. That is for sure. I'm going to be pushing on with the right flank. The battle is definitely still nowhere near one here. We obviously are hugely outnumbered. You can see, uh, you know, only having 600 men left. But taking care of one of the generals is going to give us hope. The main thing that is scaring me right now is that the enemy still have... There's four units of horse, or three units of Empire Knights, and a unit of Demigriffs right now that they can dispatch into the into a fortress. And they also have Kolf Rand. I'm kind of confused why these guys are still out of here. I guess he might have forgotten about them. I'm not sure. But obviously, I am not complaining right now that they are still stuck outside the city. Maybe he just wants to keep him in reserve. Obviously, the enemy had such an advantage to begin with. But I guess he just feels like he doesn't really need to commit them, and he, he's not going to if he doesn't if he doesn't have to. But I, as I said, I'm not going to be complaining one bit. We have our soldiers moving up. But the Hellstorm rocket batteries, they still have ammunition left. Holy shit, this is not good for me one bit. Where is it? Yeah, I think, it, I think it's over here. It still, has a, yeah, it still has a few shots left, which is not good for me. I don't have the men to fight this. Holy shit. This is not good for me at all. This is just clearing out my soldiers and the Sons of Sigma are going to be fighting hard. I'm going to be pushing up my giant here though. And even though yeah, I'm pushing up this giant, it's not a good fight for him. Even though he's doing so much damage. That is crazy how much damage he just did there. But this isn't a good fight. He's going to be taking so much damage from the Halberds and the Demigriffs as well. That's, that's not really good for me. However, we kind of have to commit it. We don't have the men not to. The Black Hawks should be okay fighting the Halberds. And we are taking down a few demigriffs left, right, and center. Again, these demigriffs are born to take care of these giants. The crimson killers are having to go in now just to make up numbers. I believe the uh, rocket battery has finally stopped shooting, which is a, which is a, a sign from grace uh, right there. I can't believe how much uh, they must have done so much damage this battle. Uh, by the looks of it, the the demigriffs were actually kind of somewhat left by themselves, allowing me to push on. And this is creating gaps in the line of the empire. As I said, my main goal here is to get down onto these gunners. We need these giants, we need our infantry to get down so we can take care of the gunners. Because at the moment, the gunners are just opening up onto my giant and doing so much damage to him. We need to try and take care of him as soon as possible. And now the Empire player has decided to start pushing in the remainders of his Empire cavalry. And this is kind of the perfect time to bring them in, is when I'm having to push down the hill. Because the Empire cavalry probably wouldn't, be, would, wouldn't have been much use pushing up this hill. So the fact that I'm having to come down the hill, you can see I've got a giant just running through these great swords, making onto the back line. 
it, it, it kind of makes sense that he's now now finally bringing up the Empire Cavalry. Now I'm having to push out here. You can see my giant just pouring on to these halberds who are trying to run away. Sorry, mate. No escape from my giant, but the missile fire is horrific. Cole Franz is coming in, and holy shit, this giant is just getting smashed right now. However, he's going to turn around and hit the great swords pretty nicely. Grimgore is charging in against these great swords. Now, this is risky. If I lose Grimgore, the game is over. That is for sure. And getting him surrounded by great swords is never going to be a great, great sign of things to come. However, I do have Blackhawk supporting him. And this is my last charge down the hill. This is everything I have is coming down to try and claim victory here. The giant, as I said, should be doing great damage against the great sword. However, you just saw how quickly this giant has been slain. And look how sad he looks now. Poor giant. Poor giant. I'm so sorry that it had to come to this. But the evil men, they, they wanted to take our lands from us. And we needed to stop them. So as you can see in the distance right there, you can see that my boar boy biggins are forming up, ready to try and find a gap in the enemy lines. The Empire Cavalry is forming up on this right flank, getting ready to do some nice charges as I finally do break through. The Empire player sees that, you know, Grimgore is going to break these crossbows and these great swords, and they kind of just need to let me into the open. Because, again, I can't stop here. I need to carry on charging forward, because if I stop at any point, these gunners will just annihilate me. I need to just be going forward at all times. Because these gunners, as I said, still have so much ammunition left. This one has, like, a ton left. This crossbow has actually run out of gun uh, of ammunition, but this gunner unit also has a load of bullets left, and so does this one. So there's still three or four units, again, and I just don't have the men to absorb these shots. I'm down to 500 soldiers, and the enemy have 15 goddamn hundred soldiers left. But as we know, my empire, my uh, giants and my black orcs are very sturdy. The empire cavalry is going to try and pounce and try and take these guys out. Getting some really nice impact charges there. And these guys are going to be ripping through my main line. Once I've slowed down these empire knights, I'm really happy with the way the battle will turn out. Because these, these black orcs are great at armor piercing. So they will just tear apart the empire knights. He's going to be doing a smart move of bringing them out. Hammer and anvil, hammer and anvil. Cole Franz is going in over here on this left flank, hitting my boar boys. However, I believe the boar boys are going to get onto the gunners yet. Yeah, I kind of almost suicided these guys in to kill the gunners. I felt like if I could take care of the gunners, then I would be able to uh, kind of really just sit back and play a more defensive battle. So that's what I kind of tried to attempt to do there. You can see that my infantry have poured on as well over here. Spells coming down. What have we got? Did I just pop a spell on back here or, or what? I think it was Grimgore popping his stand uh, stand your ground. And we are, we are actually going to be pushing back these Empire Knights into the Abyss. Some of my boar boys are still causing a bit of a nuisance. But they've pretty much been de destroyed right now. We do have some cavalry here uh, trying to break through this gap again. I feel like the enemy have uh, have forgotten about this. So I want to try and sneak my way through if I can. But the main fight is over here on this right flank. There are still so many soldiers left remaining. Cole Franz is, uh, is now pushed in to try and do the killing blow. And all my plan here is just to keep Grimgore alive. If I can get Grimgore to kill Cole Franz, then I will be more than happy. And I mean... Grimgore can definitely do the damage. If you stand your ground and his, and his weapon will be armor piercing, Cole Franz will melt if he comes into contact with Grimgore because Grimgore is just, just so much damage. So I'm really focusing on trying to take down Cole Franz as best I can. Oh, we, do we have a spell going down on these guys? The Crimson Killers getting a, a negative spell against them. Uh, Cole Franz is going to be running away, but we will pursue him with all our might. Luckily, these Empire Knights aren't getting the best charges off. This charge is going to be pretty brutal. However, now we've slowed up the enemy, we can kind of use that to our advantage. So I feel like at this point, the enemy were kind of, you know, for, or actually throughout this entire battle, the enemy has been kind of careless with their men, just because of the sheer advantage they have. When you have, what, like a 15k advantage and a two, 2v1, you're kind of not really too worried about the enemy defense too much. So they've kind of been a lot more carefree with their soldiers, that is for sure. Enemy wizard being pushed up, that's not good. So I've got the Crimson Killers guarding my back. I have the uh, I have uh, Grimgore in there fighting hard. I have a few Black Hawks. Are these guys routing or are these guys charging? And I think they're routing, which is unfortunate. I still have like a unit back here as well. I'm kind of trying to use this unit to hide away from the enemy. And I have these Orc Boar Boys. I think these units, actually no, I think these units are dead. 
I think the replays desynced a little, and these units are actually dead. That's why they're not moving. So I'm pretty sure at this point, I had everyone charging forward, trying to take care of the enemy lines. I'm pretty sure I had no soldiers holding holding at all. Oh, also, I should mention as well, I played this battle on stream. I'm planning on streaming a ton more War of Warhammer battles um, so I can get replays to show you guys on YouTube. So if you want to see any of these battles live, you want to play with me, you want to come and just chill out in the chat, then I will put links in the description down below where you can find me on Twitch TV and you can come over and chill out. Grimgore's going to be pushing on to try and do some more damage here. Am I, am I falling back here with my soldiers? I think I am falling back because I, I saw that I was starting to get a bit surrounded here. So I left Grimgore to go deal with these guys. And I guess I pushed my infantry around this, uh, this central point right here. My infantry have pushed up now, which is great to see. They are moving fast indeed. The Blackhawks are fighting hard. I mean, as, as you can see, just arms going flying. These spearmen are no match whatsoever for my soldiers. Uh, Cole Franz is overlooking the battlefield, and I am definitely running low on infantry. However, the enemy are also running a bit low on infantry as well. I'm down to 200 soldiers. However, the enemy are very, very weak right now. You've got to remember as well, we've actually managed to kill one of the, the enemy generals, which is great. And a large portion of the enemy forces aren't really that big whatsoever. Um, so that's good news for us, and we're going to continue to push on the, the fight. Even though a lot of my units are actually routing, wow, I think this replay is actually desync, which is such a shame because I'm pretty sure I had more men than this going forward. Yeah, I think this replay is actually desync. Oh, that's such a shame. It, it was pretty much exactly the same all this way up here. Yeah, you can see there's still five minutes left of a battle. However, the battle's going to end right now. Yeah, there's still five minutes left. That's such a shame that the replay desynced. I really hope that CA fixed this issue because it's so frustrating. Basically, how it ended was my men rallied down. We managed to kill a lot of the enemy forces. We pushed on to the, to the ramp right here and we managed to slay Cole Franz. Cole Franz came down to try and take out Grimgore. Grimgore just turned around and smashed him in the face and killed him. Oh, I'm so annoyed with that replay desynced. I really, really am. Um, oh, you can go ahead and check it out live, I guess, if you want to go onto my Twitch channel whilst the VOD's still up there. But I mean, it was still a really good battle nonetheless, and I think it showed off a map pretty decently. So I guess not all's lost. It was just such a shame that it was classed as a defeat when I did manage to win the battle in a 2v1. Oh, that's, that's so annoying. However, we can look at some kills. We can see Grimgore almost got 100. You can see these Orc Fanatic Archers did amazing. 223 kills on these guys. Uh, my Artillery doing great. And the Black Orcs obviously doing really goddamn well. And the Savage Orc unit as well. Getting 250 kills. Wow. If we take a look at the enemy forces, we can see that they have racked up a decent amount of kills on these Gunners. The gunners were really my main issue. And then the Hellstorm Rocket Batteries obviously doing really, really well. And all these missiles as well are racking up plenty of kills. This one getting 168, which is pretty scary. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. I apologize for the desync, but obviously there's just not much I can do about it. Sometimes replays desync. CA hopefully can fix this issue in the future. Um, but it, it was a real shame because the way it ended was my forces just rallying out. We pushed back the enemy. Cole Fran still had a decent force left, but he charged in. And Grimgore just literally smashed him around the face several times with his axe and just pretty much wrecked him until he ran from the battlefield uh, and it was just such a good battle because I had about 20 men left by the end of it it was just how strong Grimgore was so it's a real shame that it did desync but I hope you guys enjoyed nonetheless make sure to drop a like and a comment if you want to see more of these custom map battles I'll see you guys next time and fish out